девочки хотят уехать из Сибири, потому что за границей легче заработать деньги, чем... Ну, для меня вообще это все как сон, наверное, потому что я никогда не думала, что буду летать за границей, тем более одна. Я не представляю, как я буду понимать, общаться, ходить по... С обедом и также с алкогольными напитками и соками водами. Выпал такой шанс. I like to see One fashion designer, Ellie Tahari, casts for Fashion Week. He starts off with hundreds of models. She looks good. Then he narrows it down to about 25. First one. Yeah! The relationship between a model and the designer, it's always something that comes from inside. While Tahari says he's looking for something on the inside, what the rest of us see is the outside. A lot of it is just about lack of awareness, and so I really do hope that people will see this film because, you know, when I talk about these issues, I find that a lot of people who aren't familiar with the industry, just, they don't get it. It's so hard to see past this glossy veneer. Yeah. Um, but then when you, when you see this unvarnished account, oh, yeah. uh, it really is very compelling. What goes on in modeling can sometimes border on human trafficking. expert and best-selling author Michael Gross says many models feel pressured to just keep quiet. Models stay silent because they want the paycheck and if you open your big mouth you're not gonna get paid. Emily Ratajkowski appeared topless in that Blurred Lines video. Today she says she'd say no to the job but knows other models who are hungry for exposure. Lots of young models who come from out of the country or um, put too much value on the industry really get lost and caught up in it. Nicole Weider was just a young girl when she started following her dream of becoming a star. At 16, she moved to Hollywood and was soon appearing in some of America's top magazines. After eight years of modeling, Nicole had seen too many lives destroyed by the cutthroat industry and thought hers could be next. And that outside is almost always tall, beautiful, and very, very thin. It's important that a fashion model is a fashion model. It's been the industry standard for years, says agent Beth Ann Hardison. She has to be lean, she should be tall, and it's not someone who's full of body. That, that, that's not fashion. 
That's something else. I have a fast metabolism. At five foot nine and a natural size zero, 22-year-old Madison Bradley fits that mold. She's been modeling for five years, working both in the U.S. and abroad. I've had trouble fitting into certain pieces during Fashion Week or... Because they were too big? Well, too small for me, and I'm very tiny myself. After two models died in Europe from anorexia-related causes, the fashion industry in Spain and Italy began monitoring how thin a model can be based on her body mass index, or BMI. Israel has gone further, passing a law that requires a model to have a BMI of at least 18.5. In comparison, American women on average have a BMI of 26.5 and wear a size 14. The Israeli law also requires that any print ad that has been photoshopped says so. Young children are being affected by imagery every single day. You did some work with some big names, though, um, Victoria's Secret a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and some other big names. What was the turning point for you when you finally just said, I've got to get out? You know, I would say it was probably when I posed for Maxim magazine. It was a culmination of just a series of different jobs that really pushed the envelope for me. But Maxim, um, and when I was a body double for Victoria's Secret, those were my last jobs where I was like, I've had enough. I don't want anything to do with this modeling industry anymore. What young girl, if only for a fleeting moment, hasn't dreamed of this? The mystique, the money, the magic of a model's life in New York City. Being the it girl, treated like a princess, a living doll. Like Giselle, Heidi, Kate, top models who make millions of dollars a year prowling catwalks and posing in the pages of Vogue. Um, and what are some of the issues that girls are dealing with these days? Girls, teenage girls, I really believe they're in a special time in their life because they're in such a transition between, you know, obviously just being a girl and then transitioning into adulthood. And the reason why God put it on my heart to reach out to teen girls is because when I was a teenager, that's when I really started to go downhill. And I didn't have a force of um, a positive role model, model in my life. And so I didn't know where to turn. And so... I feel like teenage girls are in a really um, susceptible time in their life. And so I wanted to help the teenage girls with the transitions that they're going through through high school and boys. It needs to look effortless, but you need to be aware of your whole entire body. Okay, babe. Good. Shoulders back. They learn how to walk on the runway. <laughs> Haley seems to be a natural. Nice. Meanwhile, a photographer works first with Malia and then with Gwen. Good. Posing and walking is important, but these girls will not get anywhere in the modeling game if they cannot get down to a very specific <laughs> size. The deciding moment of this boot camp will be when they are measured. I don't think people realize, I mean, it really comes down to an inch or an inch and a half. There's so many beautiful girls and there's such a competitive world that in every way, it's like you're looking at the scales and you're tipping them and you're tipping them and you're tipping them. Based largely on those measurements, Mary and Jeff will decide who makes the cut and is sent to New York City and who will be sent home. This is tough stuff. I mean, you're wrapping measuring tape around waists. <laughs> you are so darn cute. It is the most delicate What's, situation what that we deal with. It, it's a body business. The reality is they can't let themselves go. As decision time nears though, the girls are worried that they haven't lost enough and the stress is mounting. It's getting harder and harder to lose weight in inches. Now it's the test of the tape for Malia. It's okay. It's just so... She's made great progress. You have made great progress. You can't That's be... For sure. You can see Mary and Jeff try to figure out how to delicately deliver the news to her. It, it takes time. 
She's trying to stay strong, but she is clearly upset. Um, I'm just doing with whatever Mary and Jeff say. Is this like a hard process? I don't, I don't know how to describe it. You can see her look resentfully at Haley, whose measurements meet the mark. Haley will now be heading to New York City. So I was making my choices based on, you know, what I wanted in the world and what I thought was important for myself. And I placed my identity in being a model. And so when I decided I didn't want that anymore, I was kind of left thinking, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah. And you started journaling. Tell us yes. about that. Um, well, when I gave my life to Christ, I was 23 and this was in 2009. So it's not even that long ago. Um, and it was the best decision I ever made. And after I gave my life to God, I felt a renewed sense of hope and I felt like my dignity was back, you know, back in my heart. And I started journaling about my love for God and my experiences in the modeling industry. And um, pretty soon after I gave my life to God, He put in my heart a desire to create a website for teenage girls to share pieces of my testimony on there and to um, be a light to girls and to warn them about the dangers of the Hollywood industry and about the modeling industry. And so I started journaling my experiences in in Hollywood and God placed the desire in my heart to share my experience.